Food and culture have always been interconnected. Just as culture is influenced by food, food is also shaped by culture through a specific locality's geography, practices, and traditions. If you take a closer look at Nicolana cuisine, you will notice how gata or coconut milk figures prominently in several of its native delicacies. Let's try to find out why and uncover the importance of this fruit in the region. Bicol cuisine is basically a mixture of um, romanticism no? and um, the feeliness of Bicolano's palate. Maanghang, puno ng gata. When we talk about the names of the food that we have, kinuno, tinoktok, basically talks about the preparation technique. So medyo nandun eh, medyo galit. It goes to say, no? yung pagkain din, no? when you taste it, galit din, maanghang but uh, somewhat it neutralizes no uh, ng gata bicol anos love gata because it's endemic maraming mga niyog sa bicol gata played a crucial role in the uh, culinary culture of the bicolanos it's very very difficult really to understand that only in bicol the gata uh, earned its uh, dominant uh, feature in the culinary culture We've been traveling now, Camarinos Norte, for a couple of days, loving the morning music. And the food has been amazing, the people have been amazing, but I always felt like Naga City for me was kind of like the heart when it comes to Bicolana cuisine in the region. I could be wrong, but I always enjoyed my time here, especially this market. I've been here a few times, and you really see everything that's growing in the region, but also the type of food that they love to cook. So we're here to learn more about coconut, how important it is in Bicolano food, and hopefully talk to someone who can kind of shed a light on it. But for the meantime, let's just see if we can find anything interesting. Bicolanos have identified different stages of gata according to their usage, which makes sense. So we asked a few vendors if they could explain them to us. Ito nga, pwede yung pang salad, pang buko juice. Ang laman nun, uh, malambot. Ang gata nyo, pwede yung inumin. Buko talaga. Ang uh, sunod, ito, pero mayroong sino. Pwede na itong panghalo sa mga kakanin. At ito na malagkit. Matigas-tigas na kanti sa laman ng buko. Ang uh, juice nito, pwede yung inumin din. Ito ang laman. Pwede nga, malambot yan? Malambot. Eh, loka doon. Hmm. Sabaw. Sabaw niya, at saka medyo malambot pa yan. Pangalawang edad dito sa buko. From buko, ito na ang kasunod. Pwede ito gamitin sa mga kakanin gaya ng linupak, saging, mga minatamis. Matagas ay. Makunat lang kasi. Makunat. Ito, pwede na itong pang gita. Gota, Di pa. Pang gata. May ng gata. Malambot pa nga lang yung gata nito. May na pang power. Laya, matanda na ito sa ano. Yan na talaga yung panggata. Oo, oh, panggata. Ito na yung ginagamit pang gulay, gaya ng laing, ang Bicol Express. Matigas na ito. Kailangan ito ikayo mo sa... Kayuran. I want to try some of the coconut milk and see what really makes these dishes special in Bicol. I have no idea if you can hear me, so I'm going to repeat that over there again. Well, can I try it a little bit? There you go. Thank you. Let's go over there. The coconut milk that they were pressing over there is laya, which is the last stage of the coconut. Oh my god. This is it. Wow. It's, this is not milk. It's cream. It's, it's so thick. And it's so sweet. A little bit of acidity. So much texture. Body. Lots of kind of like velvety um, textural points. Flavor-wise, it's luscious, it's rich. We've learned previously that coconuts, depending on the varieties, can be sweeter, saltier, or more watery. If coconuts are being produced for copra, most of the time, they don't really taste like much. But then you have some smaller, sweeter coconuts that are really good. And Bicol, I think, because they love coconut milk so much and coconut cream so much in all their food, they really know their coconuts well, which makes their coconut cream Probably the best in the country and probably one of the best for any type of cooking.
So in our continuous search for the best dishes using coconut milk, uh, we're now gonna check out kind of like a local fast food joint called G1's, see what they have, give it a little taste and learn a little bit more. We're gonna try a bunch of the local Bikulana dishes and there's some foreign things to me here. I'll do Pinangat, Bikol Express. I actually think this is such a great concept. I would love every kind of region or city to have a comfortable carinderia where you could have all the local delicacies in one go because it's just a great way to introduce food in an easy format. If you don't have a local connection, sometimes finding the right carinderia where to get really good food is actually really difficult. So something like this kind of gives you that base understanding of local cuisine, which I'm, I'm here for it. Like, I think, I think it's, a, it's a really good thing. So I've had variations of this dish before, but this one is stuffed and then it has a separately cooked coconut milk. Mm. Some where they add um, coconut meat with like shrimps or like, crab. So delicious. This is so good that this is actually one of the, for me, if you do come to Bicol or Naga in general and you want to bring uh, Pasta Lubong back home, you can buy frozen pinangat. Keep this in your freezer and each time you're hungry, just make this. And it has flavors that you don't usually always have in Filipino cooking, which is quite nice. So this, for me, is kind of like what a real Bicol Express should look like. As you can see, it's a lot of balao, some chilies, and a little bit of pork. Depending on where you are or where you go to eat, you'll have variations of this. I've seen some versions of Bicol Express that are literally mostly chilies. Second prominent ingredient would be in the balao. And third, just a little bit of pork for the flavoring. I mean, all of these dishes here that are famous here stemmed from very resourceful cooking where you don't have necessarily a lot of meat or protein, but how do you extend it? And how do you use it in dishes so that you can still make a perfect ulam? So let's try this. So obviously because we're here, G1 is like catering to a wide variety of people. It's not fiery hot, it's a little bit spicy, but you can have versions of Bicol Express, especially the ones that are predominantly chilies. Definitely a good start and a good kind of eye-opener as to what we can expect to eat in Naga City. So let's dig a little deeper. Chef Doi was originally from Manila. He was working in Naga City when he saw an opportunity to create a restaurant around heritage Bicolana recipes. He eventually made the city his home. And when he's not behind the stove, he is teaching in a local cooking school. Na, na, na put up tong restaurant. Ang dami kasi naghahanap ng Bicolano restaurant. Maraming karinderia. Mm -hmm. As an executive chef of the hotel, tatanungin ako ng mga tourists, saan masarap dito kumain ng Bicolano food? So lagi ko sa ilito tinuturo sa isang karinderia mm -hmm. or isang fast food. So sabi ko, this is uh, ano, magandang opportunity for us to start uh, a Filipino restaurant specializing in Bicolano mm -hmm. dishes and upscale it a bit. I mean, people usually don't necessarily understand when you make a fusion or you upscale it or you try to change it up. That comes from a deep appreciation for the traditional yeah. recipe in itself, right? Because yes. you, can't, you can't change something without understanding how it's yes. made and where it comes from. I went to the carinderia, I interviewed with my lola, and I was really looking for the people who called it Suanoy. means uh, old old recipes ng kinunot and, and then I came across this uh, Bicol Express na may tinya and hindi na siya masyadong sineserve so sabi ko it's not really fusion it's just old and I uh, tweaked it a bit lang yeah. All of that talking has made me hungry and I think Laing is the perfect place to start to learn more about the use of coconut milk Gigisa lang natin ang ating uh, aromatic so this is boiled pork already? Yeah, boiled pork okay. in a pot of uh, cam norte. Okay, and shrimp, got it. Some households don't have the, the meat. Got it. So it's only the laing talaga. So this is a broth or just water? Yeah, yes, that's broth. Mixed uh, bones of beef and chicken. Obviously, this <laughs> develops lots of flavor. Yeah, it develops a lot of flavor. And then this is the, the fun part because we do not stir. It becomes itchy to the throat. Really? Yeah. When you talk about lying, is it always taro leaves? Or yeah, will they use different types of leaves sometimes? We, we also use uh, the kam kamoting kahoy. Also, ginagamit din yung bluebee. This is pure coconut tree. No water. Ah, okay. 
So when you say that, it's using... It's uh, Would you say there are different ways some people cook it down all the way until it's just oil left? Right? Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's the general... That's the general, I know. It has to be oily. So you'll never find like a very creamy coconut. Meron din. Yung iba, ang ginagawa, nilalagyan nila ng coconut cream sa iba. Ah, as, okay. as a, so as that's why it gets the white. Ah, yeah. As, we do not put labuyo because it's too spicy and it, the flavor is doesn't match. Okay. It has to be the ceiling haba. So here, this is cooking it down until... Oily and uh, the leaves are really, really soft. Really, really soft. Today, first your uh, onions, yeah. the tinu nuts. Some say it's from Albay, some say it's from Sonsogon, but uh, generally it's uh, Bicolano. And then different regions, different meats. Ano talaga? Pagi and uh, pating. pating yeah. That's uh, that's what we use. We will add our uh, shredded, shredded tanigi. tanigi yeah. So this has to be uh, sour and salty. Okay. So that's the mark of it, right? Yeah. That was fish sauce. Okay. And again, our gata. Oh, we're just reducing this one just to cook the, the vinegar. Oh wow, okay, nice. I mean, for someone like me, cooking something with coconut cream and vinegar, for me, not, is counterintuitive. But it, it does make a lot of sense. So it has to be creamy but not oily. Okay, let's try the quinoa Is it medio traditional? Yun nga, sabi ko yung traditional nito is you see very little fish and a lot of malunggay. Mm, that's really good. But like for the laing, hindi ko siya masyadong ginalaw. The laing, the Bicol Express, and the Kinuno. Meron akong hindi ginawang fusion. Kasi I want to stick with the, the original. I want right. to present it to tourists as how, how Bicolanos do it. Before we go to our last stop, I want to know more about Pinangat. From the people we've talked to, tinuktok and pinangat seem to be used interchangeably, but tinuktok is more of a version of pinangat. Minced crabs are stuffed and wrapped in taro leaves before being cooked down in coconut cream and various spices. Honestly, in Naga, it's not the easiest to find. It's a delicacy in Kamsor, but that doesn't mean everyone makes it. It's quite tedious, but well worth the effort. We found a couple in Gainza whose main source of living is cooking and selling their tinuktok. Nagigisa sa barangay kagbong ang guys sa Camarinesor. Ang sa kuya pong hanap buhay na ginigibo, ini po sa pagdakop ng talangka na panlaag sa sakuyang ginigibong pinangat. Ay mo naman kita sa salog. Mahanap kita ni Ugama. <laughs> Titerawin ko sa sakuyang bubu, tagarig, magkakuha kita ni Ugama. Ang ako mang kuha nun ta, yan piga sa lakto sa sa samu, tinuktok. Si Tinte yun ang edad ko. Kung yan lang ko nagkaguyan kay kay bala ng mga camera man. Ay, mga imbis na duwang, duwang oras. Takundakul na dito taga mo. Ay, di yan ah. Ah, dyan pa na. Kaya pag nakapasok ka dyan, dalawa yan, sunod lang. Dua yan. Pag nakalaw ka dyan, huwag dahi kayo di pa agi yun, dahi ka na mga ka, Hali. Kuyin sa naman po, halimbaga. Kung halimbaga may rungaring ang kanahon, may, yan talagang nawawara niyo. Pag po lang ni, kunyan lang na December, maluya na. July, August, ano kaya. Pag July, August, hanggang September, nasa tao yan. Sa tao yan, gano, gano, sa alog. Digdo niyo po sa... Ini yung pigapod na iglin na sa gilid. Kuya ni pambuyod na sana piga buyod na sana pighanap kani. Bako na kay itong talangka. Si kawayan or si fishnet ko arin ko ang mas ang pinakang magkuin ng kuya ng fishnet. Ini ang pinakang kuya. Bagayon lang ni yung kawayan kung bago. Ala og iglian ugama. Ban nagagamit ka mong yog. Oh yog ini ini po nga ni yog. Oh. <laughs> Iyan para, iyan si kinakakaninda. Oh, iyan yung pagkakaninda. Kaya, pig, kaya pig na, naglalaog ang kuwin dyan dahil sa may pagkakansa ko yan. Mga perang kilo na daw yun ang estimate mo tayo. Garo mo nga unay medya garo. Grabe talaga na artista. Grabe. <laughs>
Ako po si Leonor San Juan Can, Barangay Kagbungagay sa Kamarinisor. Ako po sa rong para pinangat di dinyo sa mong lugar. Dahil po sa sakuyang pangpinangat na padal kumampuan sa kong mga aki. Sagkod sa ibang mga trabaho man, nakadaragdag na. Inuto ulaan ko ning mainit iniyong talangka o crab fest para magadan siya. Pagkagadan, ano ko siya, bubukawin ko siya para ma -ano, matanggal tong Ako kan ugama. Ang ibubugta ko digdi para malinigan, mahalian yung guramoy. Pataranggalong ko na muna yung gabos. Yan takop ka niyong talangka o ugama. Igahali ko para itong laman makuata. Tapos yan takop ka yan. Igwa yan taba, ahali yung ko yan pagkatapos ko kaini. Yan taba ka yan. Yan ang taba kan ugama. Aligi. Ang pagkagamit ko dyan, inut. Maano ako ng talangka nga ni, talangka, tapos buyod, haloong ko yan, tapos mabakal ako ng luka doon, iyo kong ihalo dyan. Pagkatapos masanggap ang laya, bawang, sagod sibulyas, sagod ng tanglad. Iyan ang pigahalo ko dyan, tapos kung gustong may maharang, hindi nabog takat mo sila. Mas kimaloto ko. Amen. Papatusun ko na ni yung pinangat. Kumsan tulo-tulo. Takon man ano kay madali yung kayan mag-aro, lumoy. Pag duwa lang. Yan pambugtak sa ibabaw. Yan yan ang panlasa talaga ko yan. Para magkaguwang ko yan. Takon man kay gutak sa ibabaw, hmm. makarus na ni. Ini ang gagamiton ko sa pagbugtak sa pinangat. Ano po? Yun yung ang lilipot, may mga sangkap na yan. O tikurugtak ko na yan sa sangkap. Lutoon ko na yan. Tapos, iyo yan ang ibubugtak ko dyan. Sa ibabaw. Alipa pa kayo luto kang pinangat, yan i, kung sa ano, iibabaw sa yung kang pinangat. Igdi sa ibabaw ka yan, iyo ibubugtak para malasa ang pinangat. For our last stop, we headed to church, or right behind it, that is. So we're in this area, apparently they call it Face the Wall because it's by the wall of the San Francisco church. Awesome little find if you are in Naga. It's a whole hallway of just various carinerias serving different types of food. We were here specifically for one who apparently has the most amazing line, but we got here at 11 and it was already sold out. So we're gonna get a couple of other dishes as well as some other line from some of the other places and just taste everything. When you hear Anything about Bicolana food, the number one thing that comes to mind for most people is lying. What I found spending a couple of days in the region, driving through Camarines Norte, then through Camsor, check out those videos if you haven't yet, is that everyone makes their different type of lying. And what I thought was lying was one variation of it. I love that I've been able to kind of explore the different types of lying that you find. Um, in Bicol and all of them are absolutely amazing and they do vary greatly depending on what's in it and how it's cooked. So you get a very oily, smoky flavor that to me honestly is just so comforting. This with a, like a massive amount of rice would be absolutely beautiful. What they were saying a while ago in terms of how they use the coconut in different stages of life for me makes a lot of sense because a coconut that's a couple of days old versus a couple of weeks old obviously very different in terms of flavor which means it's a very different ingredient which means if you use it in different recipes those recipes will taste completely different and that's why filipino food in general is so difficult sometimes to pin down because of these little intricacies that you might think don't make a huge difference but they make an absolutely massive difference in terms of the flavor of the food it's like me telling you to use um, white sugar versus muscovado sugar. It's sugar, but very different in flavor. 
Okay, I'm gonna try the Dinuguan. So the only reason I ordered this is because they actually use coconut milk in theirs. So I wanna see if the coconut cream here being sweeter changes the flavor of the Dinuguan. Very subtle. It does have a lot of sweetness to it. Honestly, it's impossible to condense the culture and the food of one region into one city tour, but hopefully today's video gave you a peek as to what Bicolana cuisine can offer and how absolutely varied it is and how delicious it is. We've actually been shooting here in Bicol and Camarines Norte and Camarines Sur specifically uh, for the last five days. So we've churned out quite a few videos about Bicol, I think seven in total. So if you really enjoyed watching this video, I really hope you watch all the other videos from Martin's Kinalas tour to my going coastal road trip from Manila all the way down to Naga to a few other features that we did in the region featuring the beautiful dishes and people that make the region so vibrant. I wish I could spend more days here and more weeks probably just exploring the coast of Camarines Sur because I'm sure it has so much to offer, but that's for another trip. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you very soon. Thank you for supporting Feature and thank you for supporting all the videos that we put out together as a team. Peace out. We've been seeing Labuyo everywhere, so I kind of just want to should I do it? I don't know if green means less chili. Oh my god. Yep, that's gonna over. Ooh.